Okay, so our character has been made. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is set up all of his behavior in Blueprint. Now, his behavior is actually pretty easy. So we're going to build the easy version first. And then in a later video, I'll show you how to make it a little bit more sophisticated. But let's jump into our character. And we'll go ahead and expand this out, make it a little bit bigger. And let's see here. We are first going to uh, actually, you know, before we even start dealing with his graph, we should probably set up some inputs to make this a little more meaningful. So let's go to edit and jump over to our project settings and we'll click on input. And we're going to start off in our axis mappings. So let's add a new axis map, which we will call uh, move right like so, and we will add some inputs to that. So I'm actually going to have three different inputs. Our first one will be mapped to gamepad left X. Our next one will be mapped to the D key. So that'd be for moving, uh, actually moving to the right, kind of moving the character forward in the direction he's facing. And then the A key. And then we're going to take the scale on A and set that to negative 1. So that would actually move him negatively. So we can now use A and D to move the character left and right. Now, under action mappings, directly above, we'll add a new action map. Let's take a look at that. And uh, we will call this jump, like so. And we, for the mappings, we will start off with uh, gamepad face button bottom in case we ever want to use like a controller. Now we're going to add a few other things as well. So we'll do the space bar, because that makes sense. And it was all the way up near the top. I just scrolled right past it, which is pretty typical for me. And let's do W. So if you kind of want to hit uh, up on the WASD controls. And let's also do touch one, in case we throw this onto a mobile device later. Boom, so that should be enough for that. Now, uh, let's see, we'll do, uh, let's change a couple of other things. Let's uh, scroll down and underneath mobile, uh, you'll see default touch interface. And this is currently set to default virtual joysticks. We're gonna set this to left virtual joystick only. And I'm gonna close and I wanna show you the reason I'm doing that. Uh, if we go to, uh, actually let's close this out of the way for a moment. Let's go to play and let's do the mobile preview. And this means we've got to save everything, so let's make sure we do that. Probably should have done that anyway. And let this load up. It'll take just a second the first time. So by setting left stick only, you'll be able to see what we get here, which is really just a stick uh, on one side of the screen. There you go. And there's nothing over here. So this would be an area where you could just tap your thumb or your finger, and that would be read as a jump command if you were to throw this onto a mobile device. OK, so there's all of our inputs. Now let's go into our character, and we can start setting up all of our various logic stuff. Uh, the first thing I want to do is pretty straightforward. We're just going to make way for um, a future multiplayer implementation if we ever wanted to do that. Uh, we're going to right click and say on begin play. So event begin play. We'll scroll in, and we're going to say, Let's just search for replicated. Yeah, there we go. Set replicates. Uh, not replicates. That's not what I want at all. So let's see. Uh, set is replicated is what I actually want. So let's turn off context sensitivity real quick and dig this up. There we go. Set is replicated. And we're going to set this to true. And what we actually want to replicate is the sprite. Now, currently over here in our My Blueprint uh, list, we don't see the sprite. That's because it is inherited from the base class. So we'll click on Show Inherited Variables. And suddenly, we see the sprite. It's up underneath Character. So you might have to expand Character. We can take the sprite, and we can copy that over. That just means if we were playing this on a multiplayer server, people could see that sprite and all of his animations coming over. OK, so let's just drag a little comment. Uh, we'll drag a box around that. We'll put a comment on it by tapping C. And we'll just say replication, just so that everybody knows what that does. Now, the next thing I want to do is set up the movement. So we'll set that up, and then we'll test it real quick. Now, this is going to be a pretty straightforward way to handle movement. Uh, we're going to start off with a move right event, because we already set up our move right axis input. 
And uh, let's turn context sensitive back on. And there's our axis event for that. And we're going to add movement input based on this. So right click, add movement input, drag a wire off, and we'll just take the axis value and plug that straight into the scale value. And that's just fine. OK, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to compare uh, the direction of this input. So let's just drag a wire out from our axis. Basically, we want to see if we're moving left or right. So uh, now I do want to mention we could test at this point if we really wanted to. If you hit compile and we'll save, I'll slide this out of the way. Let's, um, I could do this on the mobile previewer. And it shouldn't take just a, a, but a second to open up this time. And then if I move the left stick uh, back and forth, we should actually see some motion. Oh, but we don't yet. That's OK. Uh, let's see. Uh, axis move right. Let's uh, do a quick debug, make sure I'm not crazy, because I've been, I've been called it before. Uh, let me uh, load this in the selected viewport. And let's see, let's shift F1. If we move over here. Oh, oh my good. Do you guys see what I did? All right, this is another one of those moments, and there's so many of them in my videos, where you can just laugh at me. Uh, all we needed to do was tell this what axis we're moving in, which of course is x. So let's set this to 1. Get your ha-has out of the way. And once you're finished laughing at me, which is totally cool, I would do it too, uh, we can do a quick test. And oh, yep, he moves. That's perfect. OK, so uh, with that done, now let's compare if he's left, uh, moving to the left or moving to the right. And then based on the result, we'll flip the sprite either one way or the other. So we'll grab this axis value. And let's do a uh, compare float. And if it is greater than, so we're going to compare it against 0. So if it's greater than 0, then that means we are moving to the right. So we will uh, set our control's rotation to a certain value. And looks like looks like we probably need to feed it the controller first. So let's just get controller. That way we can work within our context sensitivity. So we'll get our controller, and then we will set control rotation. And this is going to need some sort of rotation to work from. Uh, so we could just drag that like so. And we could feed this a rotation. So let's do a make. Rotator. And the rotation that we want is actually 0, 0, 0. So that should work just fine. Now, if it's greater than 0, which means we're moving in the opposite direction, I'm sorry, if it's less than 0, because I know logic, I really do, uh, we'll do the same thing. So let's just copy. We'll hit Control C, Control V, and we'll run this down here. And this time, we're just going to take. Uh, that rotation in Y, or I'm sorry, rotation in Z, our yaw, and we're going to set that to 180. And that's just going to flip the sprite in the opposite direction if he is indeed moving to the left and not the right. Now, if you want this to look a little bit nicer, a little bit cleaner, uh, we can line these nodes up. And then here, we could drag out and add a uh, reroute. And that just allows us to make this a little cleaner. There you go, just so your wires aren't colliding into one another. Ah, so pretty. OK, so uh, that's now being done. The next thing we do is just make sure that that compare uh, float is actually being called. So let's plug in its executor. And we can see how that network actually looks. So let's go ahead and compile and run a quick test. This time I will test in the mobile preview. And let's save everything. And here we are. So now let's take our stick. And look, yep, he turns around. So now he slides left and slides right. And that's awesome. OK, so with that, we are about 10 minutes in. I think this is a pretty good place to uh, kind of pause. So in the next video, actually, let's go ahead and make a comment here. We'll grab all these guys. And let's hit C. And we'll call this movement. And in the next video, we'll set up our ability to jump as well as the ability to switch through all of our animations. But for now, that'll wrap things up. Thanks. <laughs>